This is the U.S. Army issue protractor, as it's called. In some other countries, you might know it as a roamer. And that's because it has multiple functions. Up right on the protractor, it says it's it labels it and tells you that it's a graphic training aid, coordinate scale, and protractor. So it has several functions. Despite listing two here, I say it has three, and I'll show you all three of those in a minute. The part where it's a graphic training aid versus an actual field operational piece of equipment is a little bit troublesome. It makes it hard to carry around. For example, it's significantly wider than a compass, and if you try to fold it, you'd ruin it quite badly. In fact, mostly they crack in half. Uh, it's also slightly larger than a notebook, just a little bit inconveniently larger than a notebook or any of the slots designed to fit notebooks and, say, map cases even. It doesn't really fit anywhere. But it's still very useful for um, doing both training exercises and for use when you're back at the ready tent coordinating things. It can be a little bit helpful there. So it's worth keeping in your kit. This one has also been modified in the way everybody decides to do it. There's tape on the back edge, which lets you see the numbers for the angle scales. This one only has tape across the mills, because that's what we normally use in the USGI compass. But if you use degrees, you would simply put more tape along there to cover up that, the uh, degree portion. And it has a piece of string. The center of a piece of paracord works very well. I actually picked the strength piece with the stripes on it to make it easy to find in all kinds of maps. But white will work. Some people use a bright red thread. Make sure you knot it so it doesn't fall out on both sides of the string. To use the first of the, the uh, features, that's the scale. There's three kinds of scales, or three sizes of scales for different maps. We use this one for the 1 to 50,000 maps. That's the 2 centimeters for every 1,000 meter grid. We'll zoom in here to make it a little easier to see. You see, it actually tells you the scale, and the, the map will, of course, tell you the scale, so if you can't figure it out by simply holding it up, don't worry about that. Ignore the size of the triangle. You're looking at the numbers from 0 to whatever 10 stands for. Here it actually is labeled the 10th as 1,000, but the rest of them are in subsets with simply 1, 2, 3 to 9. You can then subdivide it exactly like we showed at the compass. This one also has additional half tick marks, which means by that standard measure where your eye can always subdivide a, another tick mark, you can go down to quarters or three-quarter marks. The correct way to use this is really, it, it, the thing is not backwards. It might seem like it's backwards because grids go left to right, but the numbers go right to left. But the correct way is actually to put that zero point on the item you want to find the location of. At this point, we'll use this little building at the end of the road here. Pick the correct scale, put the zero point there, make sure it's square with the grid, and then you read directly the number off. This one is 3.75, so 375 meters, so 06375, and vertically, uh, whatever the vertical northing is, 600 meters. The other part thing you can do with it is measure angles for plotting. It doesn't lock it directly in your compass, but it can be very convenient too if you're trying to write down a series of plots. So let's say you're going from that same building to that crossroads. Put that center X, which also has a hole already drilled through, it, through your string, and you may use any measuring tool or the string you built in, and any measuring tool with your compass, and you simply drag it to the destination point. Obviously, you can get back bearings by going the other direction. Then, you simply read directly off of there the final bearing. This doesn't have preceding zeros, so that's zero to zero zero for that tick mark, mills, or the place we'd measured was 0,220. Those are tens between each mark. If you needed degrees, you'd use the inner scale, which also brings up then the third feature of it is that it's a very, very simple calculator. If you're given, say, a bearing to head in degrees, but all of your compasses are in mills and you don't want to have to convert, or just in general you're used to using that, find a blank white piece of paper, the back of the map or the side like we're doing here, and drag the string across 
to the bearing you're supposed to get and read the other bearing. 